Joining us now is author J. Randy Tarabier, excuse me, Tarabarelli, who knew Michael Jackson for 40 years. His biography of the king of pop is called Michael Jackson, The Magic, The Madness, The Whole Story. Mm -hmm. Randy, thanks for joining us here this morning. Like I mentioned, you, you knew Michael for uh, almost 40 years. What's your first reaction when you hear um, him in this condition uh, on these recordings? It's devastating, Chris. I mean, I think for anybody who knew Michael Jackson and cared about Michael, this is this is absolutely devastating. You know, I guess there will always be unanswered questions about Michael Jackson's life and times, but what we now know from this tape is that he really was a man who was tormented by a childhood that, you know, he felt he never had. And, you know, we've seen this in a lot of celebrities over the years. You know, fame corrupts and it ruins a child's sense of self, but never more so, I think, than in the case of Michael Jackson. And also what strikes me, Chris, is that while many people over the years may have felt that Michael was exaggerating this narrative of, of a lost childhood for maybe the purposes of publicity or career advancement, I think that we see now that even in this highly intoxicated state, it really was the main focus of his life, the, the pain and the hurt that he felt at not having a childhood. Um, you heard his, um, his manager, Frank DeLeo, express some concerns about his health. Did you have concerns about his health? Did you realize that he was in as bad a shape as he was in the last few weeks? I have to say, no, that I, I, I really did not. You know, and, and what strikes me from this tape is I think that any thinking person you know, who, who was a friend of Michael's who uh, had heard him in this condition would have immediately rushed this, this man to a hospital for treatment. And I find it very disturbing personally that Conrad Murray was listening to Michael Jackson in this state and instead of you know, throwing him in the back seat of his car and taking him to a hospital, he's tape recording the conversation. And I, I, just, I just don't know what to make of that, Chris. Well, and that's, I guess, one of the big questions that exist. Why is he taping these conversations? What are your, I mean, your thoughts well, on it? Well, uh, one of his attorneys last week said that possibly he was taping the conversation so that he could later play it back for Michael Jackson to show him, you know, how, how bad of a shape he was in. But I find that ridiculous. I mean, I, I, just, I just don't think that there's any excuse or explanation for taping this conversation. Not only that, it's illegal to tape a conversation without the other party, party knowing about it. But that's besides the point now. I think the bigger question is why didn't he take him immediately to a hospital for treatment? Did you, were you aware uh, that Jackson was taking any drugs at, at the time? Did you know? I mean, I know they're, they're talking about his drug history in the past and that's surfacing during this trial, but did you know that he was on, uh, on any drugs at this time, late in his life? Well, you know, well, you know, Michael Jackson was managing a, a many different illnesses, and the way I looked at it, Chris, was that he, you know, he was doing his best to, to manage uh, you know, a, a myriad of problems of, of health issues. Michael Jackson never took drugs to get high. Michael was, was being treated by doctors, um, obviously, in, in this case, very you know, poorly treated, uh, to handle you know, a variety of, of uh, problems, of health problems. Yeah, all right. Jay Randy Tarberelli, thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning. We appreciate it, Randy. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. All right.